Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for future videos. And in today's video, as you requested from the polls, we take a look at an unsolved crime. The crime that I've chosen to cover is the case of John Goldfinger Palmer, who was shot in his back garden in 2015 on the 24th of June. If you stay tuned to the end of the video, you'll find out why this story has a shocking twist of certain members that were involved, and those members were Freemasons. The more and more I tend to cover these crimes, and certainly unsolved crimes, why does it always refer back to a link with Freemasonry? John Palmer was 65 years of age and lived at Sand Pit Lane in South Weld, in Brentwood in Essex. He was a father and now also a grandfather, and at the time of his shooting was burning rubbish in his garden at around 5.30pm. It is believed that the gunman entered it over his garden fence and shot Mr Palmer six times at close range in the chest. A mortally wounded Mr Palmer managed to struggle a few steps before collapsing from his gun wounds. His gun wounds were caused by an assassin who police believe had been watching Mr Palmer for a long time. The reason that the police believe this is because they managed to take Mr Palmer out in an area which was not covered by Mr Palmer's CCTV in the grounds. Mr Palmer also had dogs, which happened to be inside at the time, along with the rest of his family. At the height and pinnacle of John Palmer's career, John Palmer was believed to be worth more than the Queen at an estimated value of 300 million. He owned several businesses, several properties, even a boat worth six million pounds. Robert Goldfinger Palmer was a notorious criminal and a serious figure in the underworld. He was a very intelligent man and knew how to launder dirty money through businesses and turn it into clean cash that was then bankable. He was believed to be linked to the Hatton Garden heist and even as far back as the Brinks Matt heist with regards to the gold bullion. John Goldfinger Palmer had gone as far as to install a smouldering and melting pot in his back garden to melt down metals and refurbish them. John Goldfinger Palmer's cover for this was the jewellery shop that he used to own and run in Essex. Police believe John Palmer's assassin and hitman had been stalking him for a long time and ready and waiting for their attack. They managed to drill a hole in the six foot fence that surrounded Mr Palmer's property and surveillance him until they were ready to strike. They managed to scale the six foot fence, run across Mr Palmer's property and shoot him six times in the chest using a silencer. We now take a look at some footage from the Cook Report that delves further into the past of John Palmer and his activities. Mr. Palmer, Roger Cook, I'd like to talk to you about money laundering. About what? Money laundering. He was the laundry man. The expert at turning the proceeds of serious crime into seemingly legitimate bankable cash. And this ruthless gangster was also responsible for the largest timeshare fraud in history, as well as a long list of other serious crimes. He was one of the most, in effect, dangerous members of organised crime in the UK. He was a money launderer, he was an extortionist, he was involved with some of the worst armed robbers in London. At one time, he was also Britain's richest criminal. The authorities seemed unable to stop him. Then, in June last year, just moments after this CCTV footage was recorded, John Goldfinger Palmer was shot dead by a professional hitman. We've learnt that Palmer's criminal syndicate was so powerful it had infiltrated the criminal justice system at every level, corrupting police officers, customs officers, prison warders, and even staff at the Crown Prosecution Service. There's no denying that John Palmer was a very powerful man. At one stage, he even tried to blackmail a minister over a child sex tape. And his power and influence stretched much further than just a criminal underworld. John Palmer was responsible for one of the biggest frauds in timeshares 
in history. The police reckoned that there was over 16,000 reasons that people wanted John Palmer out of the way. He had upset a lot of people, yet seemed to evade any sort of justice for his crimes. In May last year, Palmer and his co-accused were charged by the Spanish with serious timeshare fraud and money laundering offences. Palmer faced 15 years in jail. A month later, he was dead. Palmer's last movements were captured on CCTV, minutes before he was assassinated. The hitman shot him six times with a 32 caliber pistol. It is also said that John Palmer knew the members of the Hatton Heist. One of their members was never caught, who went by the name Basil. Basil was a member who worked for the Adams family, a notorious crime family from London, who have been responsible for many people going missing, hitmen, robberies, and all sorts of influence with regards to government. They're also been known to worth over £200 million. It is believed that the Hatton heist happened because there was information installed in one of the lockers that belonged to John Palmer and would criminate the Adams family in regards to other cases and hitmen. This is why when the safes were raided, there was only a small section of safes that were raided. The rest of them were left. This is a clear indication that the robbers of the Hatton heist we're looking for something specific rather than just jewelry and money. Lebanese born Mohamed Dabar was an alleged enforcer for John Palmer. He later left John Palmer's faction and started his own group. He is apparently alleged to be behind the funding and the starting of the militant group Hezbollah. Mohamed Dabar stated that John Palmer's hitman must have been someone close to him. Police take a closer look at his death. I think it's an extraordinary lack of professionalism that the police did not recognise this as a murder. Extraordinary that they did not recognise who Palmer was and start thinking about it immediately. I think it's a, a, a real pity. The golden hour was missed. You know, th this is an investigation that should have kicked off immediately. It didn't. Mohamed Dabar was arrested and investigated with regards to the fraud and the timeshare, yet he was never prosecuted. We later discovered that Mohamed Dabar is also a member of the Freemasons. Like many other crimes that we hear on a daily basis, people were arrested and never charged. This goes for politicians and figures in the public eye such as celebrities. Nobody seems to be prosecuted with any criminal charges and everybody walks free. This is the Internal Ambulance Service report into the handling of his death. It reveals that a paramedic at the scene suggested that Palmer had been shot. But he was overruled by a more senior colleague who somehow believed that Palmer died from complications resulting from recent gallbladder microsurgery. And yet most of his crimes, from drug smuggling and armed robbery to extortion and money laundering, seemingly went unpunished. The death of John Palmer means the police have lost an inside line into the criminal underworld. And now it seems their mishandling of the crime scene has also lost them the best chance of ever finding his killer. Even still to this day, John Palmer's assassin and hitman is still at large. It seems that they will never be found and that the underworld has a code of silence. But there is one more key figure in this case that hasn't been explored. He's responsible for the M25 fatally wounding of a man which he was served a life sentence for and also for fatally wounding an off-duty police officer who was found in his grounds. That person is also a suspected member of the Freemasonry. That person is Kenneth Noy. Kenneth Noy was very good friends with John Palmer and many underworld strong figures. 
He was also a funder and a beneficiary for the Essex Boys. The Essex Boys case was a very well-known case of three drug dealers who were in a car who fatally lost their life through gunshot wounds. Kenneth Noy was very close friends and the financial backer for Pat Tate. I hope you enjoyed the video and the content. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any more updates. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.